and it's pretty messy, isn't it? But what are the questions that we have to ask now? With the derivative, what are we supposed to ask? When is it zero? And when is it undefined? So what about it being zero? It's a fraction, right? So all you have to do is set the top to zero? I have to start a new page. All right, so I'm going to start a new page. Is that all right? one-fourth y cubed, what was it? One. Was it y or just y, y or y squared? Y equals zero. All right. Ooh, I'm not happy about this. Because it, it's almost quadratic, right, but not quite. I don't like the fraction, so I'm going to multiply everything by four. That's better, right? Any ideas how to solve this? We just surrender, right? We surrender. We If that was quadratic, you would you would be in business, right? Anything you might have learned in college algebra on how to attack a problem like this without a calculator or computer? Y'all remember, remember synthetic division? <laughs> it's called the rational zero test. You take all the factors of 8 and you write them down. Now that's only because there's a 1 in front of the y cubed that I can do this. So what are all the factors of 8? All the numbers that multiply into 8 or divide into 8 evenly. 1, 2, 4, and 8. And then you're supposed to try synthetic division on each of those. No? I know. No, doesn't factor. Doesn't, none of those would work. So what we've... Oh, come on. Get up here. Hold on, Mike. It's not bringing up my thing here. Oh, there it is. What we're getting here, okay, is we're, we're trying to get this y-coordinate of this point, but our algebra to find it is extremely challenging, isn't it? I mean, there's, there's no way we're going to get it by hand, unless we made a mistake somewhere. Yes. Yes. X1 minus X2. But it doesn't matter because when you, when you squared it won't matter. You could do X1 minus X2 or you could do y1 my, or yeah but even that wouldn't matter because because you square it the only difference like if i do a minus b versus b minus a the only difference between the two is the sign right 5 minus 4 4 minus 5 square it doesn't matter anymore you just have to get your x coordinates together and your y coordinates together that's the most important thing so I'm sitting here, I'm looking at this honestly, everyone, and I'm like, well, that ain't too good. That didn't work out very nice. So any other 
ideas on how we can do this. I mean, this is where we got stuck, right here, right? Back up here, didn't we, when we had XY right here, when we had that XY, I said, well, couldn't we solve that up there for X and get it all in terms of X? I mean, sorry, and all in terms of Y? Maybe it would have been better to do it all in terms of X. What would, what, what would change? Let's look at what would change, okay? Can you solve that equation? I'm going to start, I want to start a new page. Um, if we have this equation, y squared plus 4x plus 1, right? Minus 1. And we've got this point sitting out here at 3, 1. And we're trying to describe some other point here, x, y. If I solve this for y, I would get y is square root 4 minus, 4x four minus 1, right? Then I could come back over and I could replace this point, x square root 4x minus 1. And now what would the distance be? Square root, difference of your x-coordinates. x minus 3, right? squared plus now difference of your y coordinates square root 4x minus 1 minus 1 squared that's still pretty ugly isn't it you could expand out x minus 3 squared then you could foil out the next one if you did the next one, you would get this. That doesn't look much better, does it? So what I did was I took this one right here and I, I multiplied it times itself. So the derivative of that we could take, let's, let's clean it. I'm just trying to see if this is going to make it any better. It may turn out that it doesn't. So let me try and collect any like terms together. x squared, I have uh, minus 2x plus 9 minus 2 root 4x minus 1. That's just putting our like terms together. Now a derivative, it would be 1 over 2 square root junk. But what would the derivative of the junk be this time? Two x minus two. Then the nine is zero, right? But then we have a square root we have to take derivative of. So minus 2 times 1 over 2 square root 4x minus 1 times 4. How does this look to you? I would cancel those 2's. What is the numerator? Put, put all that numerator on top of that junk. What would you have? 2x minus 2 minus 4 over square root 4x, good, minus 1, but then all of that over 2 root junk. <clears throat> Can you set that equal to 0? Yes? So just set the top to zero, right? I, I'm going quickly through this, all right? I'm not doing this form formally. 
set the top to zero and try and solve that. How about a uh, how about getting a, a two dividing everything by two just to get d don't e each term has a two in it right so let's just get rid of the two what next. Yeah, there's, there's several different approaches you could take here. I'm going to move the, square, the term with the square root in the bottom over to the right side of the equation. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by the square root. So I have square root 4x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 2. And now I'm going to square both sides. When I square the square root, it becomes 4x minus 1. When I square x minus 1, I get that. And when I square the other side, I get 4. Now I'm going to expand x minus 1 squared to become x minus 2x plus 1 equals 4 and then multiply out so what I mean by that is expand this 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 so 4x squared no yeah right 4x squared oh wait that Sorry, I messed up. Sorry, that's a square. I knew something was wrong. There, there's a squared there. Everyone catch that? I missed that squared right there. So that first one should be 4x cubed minus 8x squared plus 4x minus x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 4. Collect like terms, 4x cubed minus 9x squared. So where am I? 4x cubed plus 6x plus 5 equals 0. I'm trying to get into, oh, um, minus 5. Yes, thank you. All that work, and where did we get? It looks cleaner, but can you solve it? How are you going to find that? I mean, that, that's what we have to set equal to zero, right? That's what we have to set equal to zero. That's called, you can't do that. That's one of the things about the zero factor property. Whenever we say something like x times x plus 5 equals 0, you set each of these equal to 0, don't you? I mean, you, then in that case, why don't you just put the whole left side into your calculator and get the x-intercepts? Yeah, yeah. So what I guess the moral of the story is here is that either way you do it, you end up with a cubic equation that we can't solve with any algebraic method, right? So we have to have some way of finding zeros, right? Like, how can we 